Hey everyone, welcome back to Ali Bakes. I'm Eliza Saw, and today I'm showing you how to make ube cheese pandasal. And if you don't know what ube is, ube is a purple yam that is sweet and mild in flavor and used in many, many Filipino desserts. If you don't know what pandasal is, it is a sweet, soft, and fluffy and delicious bun that is super popular in the Philippines. Very similar to a milk bun, I would say. If you don't know what cheese is, why? 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 So if you want to see how I make this ube cheese pan de sal, then just keep on watching. But before we get started, don't forget to like this video and subscribe if you haven't already. I do baking related videos every single week. So this is how you make ube cheese pan de sal. First thing you're going to need, some ube. I got some purple yams at my grocery store. I find that a lot of recipes use frozen grated ube. I cannot seem to find any of those, so I'm just going straight to the root, no pun intended. By the way, isn't the color just so beautiful? So we're just gonna take these, peel them, chop them up, put them into a pot of cold water, boil them. If you're wondering, I also boiled some taro for my mother. Then you know it's ready when you can pierce a fork through the root vegetables and then we're gonna take it out. Save the water, the purple water, because it adds a little bit of flavor and a little bit of color. So we're just gonna take some ube, mash it up, put it aside. You're gonna need about one cup or about 270 grams of ube. The other things you're going to need are some all-purpose flour, instant yeast, sugar, soft butter, warm milk, warm water, or in this case, warm yam water, one egg, and some ube extract. To put this bread together, we're going to take our flour, our yeast, our salt, and our sugar. When you add in the sugar, make sure to add in only half because we're going to add the second half afterwards. Whisk it a little, and then we're going to add in our wet ingredients. So the water, the milk, the egg, and the extract. When you're pouring in your ingredients, make sure the yeast kind of stays away from the salt because that can kill the yeast. So I'm just gonna pop this into my stand mixer with the hook attachment. You can definitely knead this by hand, but I just find that I like to use my stand mixer. So I'm just gonna pop this in on low speed for about five minutes. And then once it's pretty much all gathered, we can put it up to second speed. Just let it knead itself for another four to five minutes. Once we bring it up to medium speed, we're just going to add the second half of our sugar and the rest of our soft butter. The reason we're adding this later on is because we don't wanna disrupt the gluten formation of the dough. And butter, because it's very oily, it can actually kind of disrupt the gluten formation by lubricating the gluten strands. So that is why we add it later on. A nice little spoonful at a time until we finished feeding our dough all the ube, all the butter, and the sugar. And then we're just going to mix this continuously on second speed, or you can even crank it up up to third speed at the very end, just until the dough comes together and the sides of the bowl are kind of clean. So then we're just going to bulk ferment this. And that means we're going to put it into a bowl, lightly floured, well no, heavily floured, and then we're going to place some plastic wrap over it and let it sit at room temperature for about an hour or until it's doubled in size. So after it has bulk fermented for about an hour, we can lightly dust our clean work surface. We're gonna pat it all down to remove the excess air. 
and then we're going to take our bench scraper or a knife if you don't have one and then cut it up into strips and then cut those strips up into smaller buns and we're gonna weigh it to be around 400 oh my gosh that's a big bun we're gonna weigh it to be around 45 grams Then we can pre-shape our little dough balls and we're just going to kind of roughly put it into a ball by folding it over itself, kind of tucking it into itself and rolling it on the table and then putting it in rows so it's nice and neat. And we're just gonna let it sit for about 15 minutes to kind of chill out, let the gluten calm down a little because every time you work up the gluten, the tougher the dough will be. And this is the perfect amount of time for you to get all the fillings ready. So for the fillings, I'm going to be using some ube halaya. And this is basically just an ube jam. This is going to be our filling and I'm also using some quick melt cheese. I wanted to use like a mild cheddar. I'm gonna save that for the next recipe, but for today we're using some quick melt Velveeta cheese and I believe it kind of just tastes like American cheese. I might be using the wrong cheese for this. Either way, it's all delicious. So this is what I'm using. I cut it up into small little cubes and I have about two thirds of a cup of ube halaya on the side. Also make sure that you've got some breadcrumbs ready to be on the side for dredging later. If you do not have breadcrumbs at the ready, I just took two slices of bread, popped it into the toaster and then toasted it and then let it really dry out and then blended it up. Now we can get started on assembling the buns. So what you're gonna do is take a bun <laughs> so fluffy. We're going to put it on a lightly floured surface, but put it upside down so that you can kind of flatten down the seam side, but make sure you're, there's a little bit of flour so it doesn't stick to your hands. And then we're going to make sure that all the excess air has been pushed out, all the air bubbles, make sure the edges are nice and thin. And then we're going to spread about a teaspoon of ube halaya and about a teaspoon of cheese. And then we're going to gather the edges. Once you've sealed everything in, you can turn it back over, put the seam side down, and then give it a nice little roll so that you can really seal in those edges. A quick word of warning though, do not overroll it because then you will get <laughs> the cheese ready to escape. Also be sure to cover your balls. Also be sure to cover your dough with some plastic wrap so that it doesn't dry out and form a skin. I made that mistake when I was recipe testing and in the end they wouldn't stick to the breadcrumbs so I really just had to brush it with water. And then we're going to proof them in our oven for about 45 minutes. If you don't have a proofing option on your oven, then just put a pan of freshly boiled water into your oven and this will create a hot steamy environment for your buns to kind of just expand. So I just stuck them in there for about 45 minutes or until you can poke it with your finger and the indent doesn't immediately rise back up. That's when you know it's ready to go. Then we're gonna preheat our oven with the buns out of the oven and we're gonna bring it up to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. And once it reaches temperature, we can throw our buns in and bake it for about 25 minutes. 
And you know it'll be done when you can lift up the bottom and see that it's formed like a nice golden crust at the bottom. Then we can pull them out of the oven and just savor the moment. Savor the smell, savor the beautiful round buns. Bread does take a while, but it, boy, it is so worth it. So just make sure you let them cool before enjoying them. This recipe was actually inspired by my cousin who lives in the Philippines. She runs a bakery business in Manila and she does catering. So as you can see, baking runs in the family. I get that. I hope my buns did yours justice. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed that video. I hope you are inspired and want to try some ube cheese pan de sal buns. If you do, take some pictures, tag me. Um, I hope you like this recipe. I really like this recipe because first of all, we didn't add any food coloring to make it purple and it's just super delicious overall. So let me know if there's any other Filipino desserts you would like to see or any kind of other desserts you would like to see. Leave a comment below. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe if you haven't already. I do baking videos every single week and I will see you next week. Bye.